Hey YouTube, this is a video on why I believe that Yeshua, commonly known as Jesus, is and cannot be God. Okay, um, first I'm going to go through characteristics that I went through in a past video recently on um, characteristics of Yahweh and conflicting characteristics of Yeshua and how they cannot be the same being. Yahweh is all-knowing. Um, Proverbs 15.3, uh, 1 Chronicles 28.9, Psalms 139 sorry. <coughs> Excuse me. All-powerful, omnipotent. Yeshiah, who were Isaiah 42.5, Revelations 11.17, and Revelations 19.6. Excuse me. <coughs> All-truthful. Well, sorry, that one they, they both are, so skip that. Um... All present, omnipresent, Tehillim or Tehillah or Psalm 139, 7 through 8, and Yirmiyahu or Jeremiah 23, 24. Um, immortal, incapable of dying, Tehillim 90, verse 2, and 102, verse 12, or Psalm. Romans 123, 1, verse 23, and 1 Timotheos or Timothy 6, 16 through 17. He's invisible. Um, I don't have the passages with me, but there are places, there's a couple, place in Yohanan, and there's a place in, like, 1st or 2nd Yohanan, where it says that, um, God cannot, no one has ever seen God. No one has ever seen God. You know, you can find that, I know it's not just me. But, sorry, I don't have those references handy. Um, he's untemptable. See, Jacob, or James 1, verse 13, um, superior to all others and everything else. He's spirit, or ruach, or breath, wind, essence, character. He's, you can't see the wind. That's the word for it, wind or breath. Um, something you can't see. So, And it talks about no one has ever seen him. Um, and like I was just saying, invisible. That, um, that That's what he is. He's, he's non-corporeal. Yohanan, or John, 4, verse 24. Um, he's not a human, or an ish, or a son of a human, or man, um, or Adam. Bamidbar, Numbers 23, verse 19, Shemuel, Aleph, or Sam, 1 Samuel 15, verse 29. He's unchangeable. Malachi 3, verse 6, or Malachi. Um, let's see, he's ageless. He doesn't age. Um, he's fatherly and motherly. He's beyond comprehension or imagining. Um, he's greater than all others. So, those things would conflict with um, Yeshua's being, which I think is kind of obvious. The Yeshua was the image of Yahweh. He wasn't actually Yahweh himself, since Yahweh can't be seen. He was the image of Yahweh. So if you want to see what Yahweh looks like, you look at Yeshua. Um, and particularly, you look at things like his goodness, and his honesty, and his hump humility, um, and his healing people, and his teachings, and his teaching teaching Yahweh's instructions. So those that's how he's the image of Yahweh, in my understanding. He's the son of Adam, or son of man. I mean, he's called that in verses. And Yahweh says that he is not a son of man. Um, he's the son of Yahweh. And if he's the son of Yahweh, he can't be Yahweh himself. And that's in Mat Mat Matic Yahu, or Matthew 5, 9, Lucas, or Luke 5, 20, verse 36, and Romans 1, verse 4. Um, he's Hanabi of Yahweh, the prophet of Yahweh. So he's not Yahweh himself, he's the spokesman, the, the messenger, the prophet. Um, the servant of Yahweh. So he's not Yahweh himself, he's his servant. The Kohen Haggadah, the high priest, according to Melchizedek, and I don't think that Yahweh can be a high priest. But if somebody wants to correct me on that, I'm open to it. Firstborn from the dead. Now Yahweh can't die, so Yahweh can't be the firstborn from the dead. Um, but Yeshua is... He is the first one from the dead. He's our older brother. Yahweh's our father. Um, and I know there's that verse, and I think it's Isaiah, Yeshiyahu 9, verse 6, and I'll get to that. But um, he's the bridegroom. Yahweh's not our bridegroom. Yeshua is. Um, Yesh Yahweh dwelt in him, so if he dwelt in him, he can't actually be him. Yahweh is his God, or Elohim. Now that right there says that he can't be Yahweh if Yahweh is his Elohim. Yahweh is his powerful authority. Um, he speaks and does what Yahweh tells him to, and he came to do Yahweh's will. Um, Yohanan, fi or John 5.30, 8.28, and 14.31. Um, so, 
he's not doing things on it. There's other places where it says that he's not doing things on his own accord. He didn't come on his own initiative, and he can't accomplish anything on his own initiative, and he can't testify about himself without a higher authority. So that his higher authority is Yahweh. Um, he was tempted. Yahweh can't be tempted. Um, he has limited knowledge from Marcos 13.32. There was something he didn't know. Well, Yahweh knows everything. Yahweh has no limits to his knowledge. He was born. He died. Um, even though he's alive now and, and he will be forever, he still was born and he died. He got tired. Um, Yohanan 4.6. He got hungry and thirsty. Matthew 21.18. Marcos or Matthew. Um, Marcos or Mark 11.12. And Yohanan 19.28 or John 19.28. He learned obedience and was made perfect through suffering or made mature through suffering. That one is a huge one. I, I, you know, when I was thinking about this, I didn't see any way around it. He, he couldn't be the Almighty because he learned obedience. He learned Hebrews or Hebrews 2, 10, 5, 8 through 9, and 7, 28. If he learned obedience, I don't, I don't know how that would be possible. Um, and he says that other things will do greater things than he did. And he, so, see you, Hanan, uh, or John 14, 12, and he was unable to do a miracle in Marcos 6, 5. Um, Yahweh is not unable to do miracles. Um, and I don't think Yahweh was short, and I think Yeshua was. But anyways, um, now people may say where he says, My Lord and my God, where Thomas is saying that to him. But in Hebrew, that would be, be um, my master and my powerful authority. Now, even Yeshua talks about how other people were called gods. He, he said, if um, if the scripture is said that you are gods, and scripture can't be broken, and Yeshua is talking to, I think, the Perushim or Pharisees. Um, so he's, he's telling them that people were called gods. So just to say that he's God is almost meaningless, um, because it's just saying that he's a powerful authority. But we have powerful authorities. It doesn't mean they're gods doesn't mean they're, they're um, deity or anything like that. So that's why I think he he is Elohim in, in, in as much as he is a powerful authority. So in that way you can say he's God in, in, such, um, in the sense that he's Elohim. But he's not God as in the sense that he's deity or almighty or super supernaturally powerful as far as um, his, his humanity when he was a man on earth before he died and rose again. So... Um, Oh, I was going to go to uh, Yeshayahu, or Isaiah 9, verse 6, I believe it is. Give me just a moment, and I will get to that. But anyways, that's... So, I, I, I think he's only deity in as much as any of us can be deity once we've risen again. Then we... It's like we're joining Yahweh's family. We're, we're becoming his sons and daughters. But to do that, we have to be his sons and daughters in truth. So we have to be walking according to him. We have to um, be in his image. And his image is, you know, the Ten Commandments. Um, no lying, no cheating, no stealing, no murdering. Um, not having any other authorities above and beyond Yahweh. He's, he's the ultimate. So uh, let's see if I can find that really quick. Sorry, I should have had this set up beforehand. Oh, well. Um, that's life, isn't it? So, nine, let's see. Ah, Yeshiyahu, or Isaiah 9, 6. Because indeed a boy has been born for us, a son has been given to us, and one day the responsibility of kingship will rest on his shoulder in his mind. And he calls out, Yele ya'atz el gebor abi ad sar shalom which, from my understanding, means wonderful in counsel is El the Mighty Warrior, my Father, everlasting ruler of wholeness and peace. I'm just going to repeat that. And he calls out, wonderful in counsel is El the Mighty Warrior, my Father, everlasting ruler of wholeness and peace. Beautiful. Um, if you check with, with um, native Hebrew speakers, I'm guessing that they would back me up on that, but you're welcome to. And that's my conclusion. That's why I think that Yeshua is and cannot be God. Thanks, and have a good life. Bye.